Hi there. Hi, how are you? I'm great, yeah, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Fantastic. How is life in Sweden? It's uh, a bit cold. There's uh, a lot of snow out here uh, outside my vin window, but it's good, yeah. Good. And you're coping okay in lockdown, treating you all right? Yeah, I mean, it's still still kind of open everywhere, so you can do stuff, but we're all very, like, cautious and, you know, it's restricted, but still, you know, I don't feel claustrophobic yet. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, I know. It's, How it's, about you? Yeah, it's fine. Well, I, I'm in Edinburgh, um, so Edinburgh, Scotland's okay. quite, like, severely locked down just now, so we're all working from home, and, like, shops are closed, so, like, you know, I, I do find myself going a lot bit stir crazy, but it, it's just... Yeah. It's, is the best thing for it just now, so I just have to to go with it. Yeah, um, it is what for, it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, oh, thank you! Well, it's, it's so much fun. Thanks for having me. Especially, like you know, you're going to be so busy soon with Melo coming up. Um, so I, I always I guess, have time. Don't worry. Oh, fantastic! Well, thank you for taking the time. It's always, it's always of course um, considered. So the sort of first question I was wanting to ask you was, um, what is it about Melody Festival that appeals to you as an artist? I mean, it's a great window um, to, you know, get my voice out there, uh, of course. And it's also a lot of fun, like the whole circus of it all. Like the production is huge. So over at least over here in Sweden it's probably the biggest thing you can do as an artist um yeah. television wise so I mean to get this opportunity you know I had to just jump on it I felt like yeah I, I was uh, I was looking at the viewing figures for Swedish television and I think pretty much five of the top 10 were all kind of melody festival and related so it's yeah. it is the platform I guess isn't it um it is for sure I know Obviously, you were you were involved last year as a writer on uh, the Mama's Move, and yeah. kind of thinking back to that, was there a lot of pressure behind that? Because obviously, you know, Europe had, had fallen in love with them due to their performance with John Ludwig. Um, yeah. So this is kind of their big first moment as a, a sort of group themselves. Did you feel that pressure, like from a, a writer's perspective? Um. Yes and no, you know, I tried not to think too much of it because, um, I mean, they got a lot of songs sent to them and they chose this one because um, they believed in it. So I felt like my job was kind of done once I delivered that work, yeah. you know. Uh, but of course it was, you know, I, I was anxious about, you know, people hearing this song and feeling like, because they already had this expectations on them and the fans from before. So I, I, I was nervous that they wouldn't feel, you know, what we felt or that the song represented them. Because that's always so important for me as a songwriter to have like, you know, to kind of embody the whole vision and the message of the artist and for us we felt like we did that we you never know what the, the listener is going to think and uh, fortunately people felt the love that we were trying to sp spread so yeah yeah and, and i think as well it, as you say like you, you did kind of really capture the kind of the sound that we were hoping for that they would produce like it, it just felt like the sort of music that you would you know, really kind of hope that they would uh, create. So a, a real special moment as well when you think that. Oh, thanks I, for I, saying I, that. Well, I, they'll, they'll be around for a long time. And I think they're, you know, they're, they're so loved already that it's, uh, it's yeah, it's a big achievement. Um, does it feel yeah. a bit strange kind of, I don't want to say competing because I know that there's not that sort of spirit of rivalry, but does it feel a bit odd to think that you're you're both in contention for, for winning Melfest? If, for me, I feel like it's just fun, you know, it's kind of like a reunion, even though we don't get to like interact as we would have usually without a pandemic. Uh, it feel I'm not very competitive. I just feel like it's dope to be a part of this production and I'm, I'm just going to have fun and see a lot of dope live music, you know, but um, 
yeah, I don't feel like it's, you know, it's not me against them or the other way around, you know? So I, I'm just excited and they deserve the world. So I'm just happy to be like in this journey again, but on another way, you know, with yeah. them. I, I think as well, like, you know, what you say about experiencing all the live music as well. I think it's going to be so needed for so many people. And I think oh, yeah. the fact that Eurovision and, and, and Melfest are going ahead this year is such a big sort of beacon of hope to so many people because we've not been able to go to gigs, we've not been able to kind of enjoy music in the same sense as yeah. we normally would. Um, yeah, I feel like there's probably a lot of people devastated that we weren't, a lo- uh, we weren't, you know, uh, we couldn't do the whole Eurovision last year and this is kind of like reigniting some kind of spark and you know I feel like everybody needs that sense of togetherness uh, that Eurovision is so I'm so happy that they that they're doing the Melfest and hopefully something for Eurovision I don't know what they're planning but you know either way it's, it's just it's something uh, that we can look forward to and I think I feel like that's very important right now. Yeah I, I think you're 100% right um, in terms of um, last year it was a really productive year for you in terms of your own musical output um, you know with your singles and the Consequences EP um, how, how did the kind of development affect that do you feel like your creativity was, you know, maybe slightly more productive because there were weren't as many live performances, um, or do you kind of feel like you, you feed off live performances when you're creating music? Um, not necessarily. It, I mean, the whole, you know, creativity kind of shifted a bit. Like I'm used to doing. 50 50 songwriting and my own artist stuff and usually like I work five days a week with new people in a new studio every day and I just you know jump around and uh, and now it kind of forced me to take the time to well first of all be here at home and just you know writing music on my own uh, but also like focusing on my artist stuff and um because you know the songwriting thing was much more limited like i i'm fortunate that i had some songs uh, ready to be released so i could still come out with new music this year or last year um but you know i i just kind of focused on what i could control and that was creating new music for me uh, so it was different but i'm still you know lucky to be able to work are you quite regimented with your writing process you, you mentioned kind of five days a week is it the sort of thing that you say um i'm going to sit down at nine o'clock and and try and, and write something or are you kind of more when you would feel the inspiration you know me as a person i'm very like I like nine to five. I like structure. So I've gotten used to working like that. But in this industry, I'm also very, you need to be flexible because a lot of people won't work before, you know, one in the afternoon because, you know, it's it's a rock star <laughs> lifestyle. And so I'm also used to doing like all nighters, but I prefer having a kind of a nine to five job and feeling a bit normal because I have friends and I have my boyfriend and I have people who around me who don't do this line of work and it's hard to kind of plan your life if every day is like oh I don't know when I'm going to be off um so I've I've learned to kind of you know get creative on demand uh but of course I still wake up in the middle of the night and have ideas so you know, I have my phone ready to record voice and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of people that, you know, maybe haven't listened to your, your solo output and will be introduced to you for the first time through Melfest, how would you, de- I know this is a, a quite a, a tough question, but how would you describe yourself as an artist? Um, I, I mean, I, I know I've been listening to your, your music a lot in terms of uh, building up the interview. Um, yeah. I, I do think it's, it's it feels like a very authentic voice um, and it, it has a sort of soulful quality that it is relatable um, yeah. especially especially your last EP um, 
but I mean, I'm, I'm not so answering. Much. I'm going to leave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot. You know, I've, I've, I tend to say that I do emotional pop. Uh, and you know, sometimes that has a bit of fl flavors from soul music or R and B because I have a lot of influences growing up from different genres. Uh, but you know, yeah, emotional pop. Because if I just say pop, you know, you, you're gonna think I'm, I'm just dancing around <laughs> and being happy. Um, so I'm trying to be very personal and honest in my lyrics but using the contrasts where sometimes you know it's a really sad song but a very happy and uplifting production for example and uh, you know always like taking the listener on kind of a journey through different emotions like that's what I try to do um so um it's hard to nail just one sound because I always try to kind of develop what I do and experiment and do different things but yeah Emotional pop is, I think, the best way to kind of sum it up. Yeah, I, I love that idea of like kind of teardrops on the dance floor. Like it's it's yeah, it's maybe kind of sad, but you can dance to it, and it yeah, like, you don't have to listen exactly. to it when you're sad. Um, exactly, that's what I wanted to do with my with my entry this year. You know, um, in terror, I obviously I don't know how much you can say about the song at the moment. Um, so the next either. few questions, <laughs> you'll probably shut me down for everyone. <laughs> No, it's um, all right. But in terms of the, the track, are you going to be using Tears Run Dry as a sort of launch to maybe like an EP or an album? Um, or are you just going to get that out there and see what happens? It's, it's still very open. Um, I have songs, uh, you know, ready to be released after this. Um, and... It would be amazing to have an album by the end of the year, but I think it kind of depends what happens in the show and what kind of, you know, how my life will look like afterwards. Um, you know, if I do, if this summer, or if you're even allowed to tour and, you know, do live gigs, then maybe that will affect how many songs I release, or maybe I have time to write a lot of stuff but either way there's going to be new music coming out because i have music ready that i i'm just dying to show people yeah and, and when you kind of produce it is it very much like you want to get out there and, and hear people's opinions as, as soon as possible or do you kind of want to protect it in a sense um i mean it's always scary and you know you feel a bit naked when you release something uh but yeah it's 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 always kind of thrilling to hear and especially see the, the audience when you perform it and how they react. And it's also like, I, f I feel like that's very popular in the DJ scene that they kind of try out songs, unreleased songs, just to see how the audience reacts. And yeah. that would be like something that I would want to do later on if, you know, if I would be more established and had people, you know, coming to my shows that are fans and just try to, you know try out songs and see how and kind of make decisions out of what people who follow me wants to yeah. hear because uh, I feel like there's you know the fans are such a big part of your career I think as well like the good thing now is you've got things like Spotify that can actually show you the tracks and the, the yeah. streams that they're getting so you actually can almost have it quantified into you know this song's had 13 million this is had six and you know you can in a sense, go by what, what people are, are listening to. Um, yeah. But in terms of going back to sort of Tears Run Dry, um, what would you say is the kind of inspiration and the, the theme behind the song? Well, I wanted to make a song um, that is representative of what I already do. Um, so like I said before, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, it's emotional in a sense but it's still a journey when it's not just sad the whole song through you still feel that kind of vibe that is you know your vision and Melfest and you know uh, and unity because uh, I feel like it's important to have different elements of a song especially in this show um, so yeah I've just been inspired by doing something that's not 
super expected uh also like visually with staging and stuff i'm i'm trying not to be you know following any norms i okay. i want to challenge them i think as well when you think back to people like lorene like staging and the way it was delivered was yeah. so much part of that um so yeah i, I I'm, I'm really excited to see how that how that comes out yeah um, I mean, I, I've heard people talking about Lorene's performance, like no one really got what it was going to be until they saw it, you know, like people thought she was crazy for, you know, how she planned the whole thing. And then when they saw it, it's like, oh, of course, like this. <laughs> it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so do you, you know, have the chance to do much choreography? Is there a little bit dancing in your performance or is it? There will be dancing, I can tell you that much. Uh, a little bit from me and I get help from others. <laughs> um, I'm not a dancer, but I'm going to do my best to kind of, you know, pull some moves at least. Uh, I'm sure it'll be convincing. Yeah. Um, have, you, <laughs> have you got an outfit picked out yet? I do. Uh, we just nailed one this week. There's been a lot of, you know, sending pictures back and forth and having fittings. But yeah, we found found a perfect outfit that everybody loves. So yeah, I'm now. I'm I, I just can't to... wait to see it all together, all combined. Um, Same. The, I mean, thinking of kind of of, of Melfest generally, are there any entries from kind of the the history of the contest that you think deserve a little bit more love? and a bit more praise than you know, maybe they didn't qualify for, for Eurovision? Oh, like in the Swedish one, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know everybody loves uh, Euphoria by Laureen, but her first entry, My Heart Is Refusing Me, is probably my favorite. Like that song was so underrated, I feel like. Uh, but she was new, so maybe that's why. Uh, but that's a song that I, oof, I really, really love. And also, I mean, like, Daughter, like, the first time she uh, performed, I think she ended up last, which is crazy now, because it wasn't that long ago when I rewatched her performance, and I was like, this is so good. Like, she, her song Cry is just, yeah, amazing. So there's a lot of hidden treasures yeah. in, in the competition, yeah. I think Daughter as well, like, the return this year is so hyped. Um, yeah. Because I know she was a big fan favorite last year. Um, yeah. And obviously you've got like icons like Jessica Anderson, Charlotte Pirelli. Like, real is such a good year. Um, yeah. I, I, I can sense the kind of collective excitement of everyone around like, the Eurovision fans that are coming back. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Sorry. Go on. Oh, no. I, I, feel free. Go, go for it. Uh, no, but I, yeah, I, I feel like this year they've really focused on, you know, uh, big artists and and big songs um and i feel like the the quality is very very high this year and there's a lot of professionals which of course makes it like even more of an uphill for someone like me who's an unestablished but it's also very exciting because i think it's going to be such a great show with just great live music that people you know really want to hear and there's, yeah, a lot of excitement in, you know, duels between different artists. So, yeah. I think as well, it, it puts you on the same platform as these people. You know, you you could have someone that's been in the industry for, for 30 years and then, you know, maybe some more emerging talent and you've got the same same chance. It's quite nice. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, the sort of build up to your performance, what, what to your kind of your, your routine? Are you just going to be... Rehearsing as much as you can, practicing the choreo. Yeah. Or... yeah, right now I'm I'm singing the song like two hours a day just to have it like, you know, like a, a part of my body. Uh, and now when I've gotten choreo from last week, I've, I'm, I'm singing while moving and that's kind of new to me, you know, I'm, I'm used to the sad songs <laughs> where I can just stand still and you know everything is here yeah. now my whole body needs to express express emotions and so I'm definitely just like practicing that every every day um until it's perfect you know yeah I mean if all else fails just go jazz hands <laughs> yeah 
Good idea. Good idea. Uh, no, don't, don't, please. I don't want to be responsible <laughs> for that. <laughs> um, so kind of thinking, like, in terms of the, the Artists on Belfast, I know it's such a big event itself. Is Eurovision kind of always in your back, back of your mind, though, when you're, you're entering that? Or do you just think, I want to go and experience Mellow as, as best I can? And then... Think about the, the I think it's I think it's always I would lie if I I wouldn't say that it's 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 always in the back of your mind but I mean here in Sweden like Melfest is such a big platform that the competition here is is you know is enough at itself to kind of create a career out of but I mean, it would be amazing to just take it to another level because Eurovision is a thing in itself. Um, and yeah, so I definitely feel like that's also a dream um, for sure. And kind of thinking of Eurovision as a whole, what would you say, you know, if you had to maybe name one or two all time favorite Eurovision acts of all time? All time. Hmm. Well, I mean, being Swedish, I got to say some ABBA stuff, you know, like that's, you know, old school and kind of put us on the map with all music genres, even outside of Eurovision, like ABBA's done it, um, you know, paved the way for a lot of singers and songwriters in Sweden. And then I was in Tel Aviv when uh, Eurovision was there in 2019 and I loved Soldi uh, with Mahmoud. Like that's one of my favorite songs of all time. So, he was yeah. so cool. Yeah. This, uh, you know, I, there was just something you felt like this is, this is an icon that we're watching. Uh, yeah. It, it was crazy and the atmosphere in the green room was just cra- like people were everyone was dancing and on and they were doing the clap and it, it was you know such a perfect song for like no one you know understood what it meant and except for the people speaking italian uh, but you know people could still you know kind of sing along and dance along and still feel that you know togetherness yeah. so and that's, and that's, and that's what it's about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I, I don't want to end on a negative note, but being British um, to a fault, like, what what can we do to, to help us in Eurovision? Because it just seems like we've just, you know, we, we did do quite well back in the, the 60s and the 70s, and now it just seems like the UK is just like, well, here they come with their, their song, and it's, you know, it's, it's not going to do well. I don't think you're doing anything wrong, to be honest. Like, I don't think it's it's not the the songs or the artists. I think there's uh, unfortunately a lot of like politics and other opinions behind, you know, how people vote and why they vote. Uh, but the UK always brings such a show and such amazing singers. I always look forward uh, looking at your performances because, you know, like in the UK you have this you know specialty at finding unique like crazy vocalists um so and that's what for me as a listener like i mostly listen to the singer and someone's you know tone of voice can can express as much as lyrics can and you're so good at that so i i don't i don't feel like you can change anything like there, there's nothing yeah. wrong with the songs and sort, uh, sort the political side of things first and then maybe yeah the will follow. <laughs> yeah i feel like yeah you should just keep on putting on a great show and hopefully things change and people open their mind a little bit yeah, yeah. that's a positive way to, to look at it um, yeah. I think especially, I, I do get frustrated you know, when I speak to people like friends and, and relatives, there's this kind of idea that, that Eurovision is still, you know, it, it's a novelty to, to a lot of British people, which is frustrating because you see how seriously everyone else in Europe takes it. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I don't know, it's, it's one of these things I think we, there's just a kind of public consensus here about it as well, uh, unfortunately, but okay, that's how things are. Yeah. Um, but it, it it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was so nice to talk to you and I know how busy you'll be um, on the run up to, to this. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I hope we'll get to catch up.